Welcome to our podcast, Inspiring Living, with me, Mark Candelaria. I am an architect, blogger, traveler, chef, father, and husband. I am the founder and now partner of a fabulous 20-person architecture firm specializing in high-end residential architecture, designing amazing homes across the country. We have hosted tours over the last 20 years to Italy, Spain, and soon Napa. And in the course of all this, I have met a lot of interesting people who truly inspire me. We are excited to now be in our second season, and our podcast is about all the opportunities that are right there in front of us to inspire living. Yes, we will talk about architecture and design, but every week we will venture to all sorts of topics that will inspire you, teach you, and motivate you to inspire living every day. My guests will include a wide gamut of amazing people from those in the design industry to clients to real estate professionals, chefs, artists, sports figures, and philanthropists and people who just flat out get it. So sit back and enjoy, and let's have some fun exploring all the opportunities that are there just waiting for us. Please subscribe and get ready to be inspired every week. Okay, as my dad says, here we go. Because Inspiring Living is all about the people and the organizations that inspire us, we are excited to have Monogram Appliances as one of our sponsors. Anytime we do a new kitchen or a kitchen remodel, Monogram Appliances are what we recommend to our client. Their appliances are the definition of luxury, meticulously detailed using the finest materials and an ownership experience that is second to none. This is how Monogram is always thinking ahead and inspiring and elevating the kitchen experience. Because at Monogram, they don't just elevate one thing, they elevate everything. Welcome everyone and thanks again for listening to our podcast, Inspiring Living. Welcome to season two, and we have a fun podcast for you today featuring an amazing winemaker we met while in McMinnville, Oregon during my July exodus to this amazing part of America. It was such a fun, fun trip, and it's it's great to be back, but boy, I miss those uh, morning bike rides to the coffee hut and uh, the walks through the forest. Um, uh, It was awesome. It was just absolutely awesome, but I have returned to Arizona, and I'm back to the groove, and I'm enjoying our amazing new office digs, and I'm looking forward to sharing our new office and kitchen. And I know our director of lasting impressions, Janice Rantanen, is busy scheduling dinners, and I hope once the COVID numbers come down, we can start doing our Friday happy hours. All great things to look forward to for sure. So um, we are Zooming through August, and our Candelaria design team is now in week 22 of working from home. But I'm noticing more and more of the crew donning the masks and now working at the new offices. I think everyone's getting a little burnt out at uh, being home and ready to kind of be back around everybody. Um, you know, I think we're all pretty social people, and we've all been pretty cooped up for quite a while. And it's it's great to just see everybody at the office and feel that energy of, of working together. So it's been an interesting process, and I'm kind of looking forward to um, getting back in there. As I said, I have been... Uh, getting in there a little more often, and it is so awesome to be in our new conference room, my new personal office, and of course the new kitchen and lounge, now furnished by my wife Isabel's Earth and Images team. The chairs arrived this Monday, and oh my God, it is so fun. They're these cool, swivel, furry, kind of loungy chairs, so we're going to have some fun in there. Uh, I hope everyone is hanging in there. We are busier than ever, thank God, and I so am hoping that uh, we stay that way. That's for darn sure. I want to give a big thank you to all of you who have been listening to our podcast as our listeners keep growing nicely. We had our biggest month of downloads ever last month, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I also want to thank you for the ratings and reviews. I really appreciate those, and you never know if I see a review or a rating in the next uh, 30 days, there may be a new Candelaria Collection pasta maker heading your way. So give us those reviews. We love them. We also have a beautiful feature in this month's Lux Magazine featuring a stunning contemporary home in Paradise Valley designed by my partner Vivian Ayala and yours truly. The home was built by Cullum Homes with stunning interiors by Anita Lang. You can listen to Vivian's podcast in episode 50 from season one and Anita Lang's podcast in episode 40. Check it out and give those podcasts a listen. Those two ladies definitely inspire living. We sure enjoy the time in Oregon, and I have a fun podcast today featuring our new friend, Bruno Corneau, and his lovely wife, Isabel. We recorded this podcast at the Domain DVO Winery north of McMinnville on a lovely, lovely afternoon. His story of coming from France, where he learned his craft, and his journey ultimately landing in the heart of Oregon's Pinot country truly epitomizes inspiring living. 
We do our best to inspire living in everything we do, from our podcast to our cooking classes to our tours and, of course, with our Candelaria Design Homes. Okay, have a great week, everyone. Stay safe, and let's all live our lives with love, compassion, grace, and positivity. Okay, here we go. My guest today is Bruno Corneau, director of winemaking at Northwest Wine Company in Dundee and owner and winemaker of Domaine Divio Winery in Newburgh, Oregon. It's great to meet you, Bruno, and thank you for accommodating us today. This is awesome. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'm very happy to have you today. It's, it's great to, to receive some people from outside that, that really wants to, uh, to focus on, uh, on the, all the efforts we're making here to make, to make great wine. So uh, it's a, a very enjoyable to have you here today. Yeah, this is fantastic. Well, interesting story. Um, we, we arrived here early July, and we've been kind of exploring the area. And one day, we had, as we first started our trip, we had to go into Portland, into the Beaverton area, to pick up a new iPad or I, a keyboard for my iPad. And then we were heading back, and we said, well, we could go down the main highway, or we could just kind of wander and see what we find. And so we wandered through this little valley, and all of a sudden, we, we tried a couple wineries. They were full. We couldn't get in. And we tried yours, and it was pretty close to closing time. I think we were the last people here uh, for the day. And we parked and called, and they said, yeah, we can, we can get in. And, and we came, and, and the l young lady who served us here was Sarah, mm -hmm. who was absolutely beautiful and very accommodating. And we sat out on the Adirondack chairs, and we could not have had a better first winery experience than what we had here. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, we, I know we're blessed in the area. I mean, not only because of the, 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 the smoothness of the, the way we've been uh, welcomed when we, we first arrived here, but also the, uh, the landscaping, the, the beauty of the, the, the area, the, 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 the soil for the, for the wine, the potential for wine is exceptional and the, the views of, from our valley is really exceptional it's, as well. It's fabulous, it's absolutely fabulous. And it's so nice to come back here again. So uh, I'm, I've been looking forward to this for several days. So I just really wanna thank you again for accommodating us. So, um, so we're here in the Oregon wine country. It's, I've been in this area a couple times, but never really focused in. And my daughter went to school in the University of Portland several years back. And so she's been kind of pushing me to come back here and explore it a little bit. And I'm always kind of enamored with Sonoma and Napa. And we do our tours to Italy and to, to Spain. I was like, McMinnville, what, what? Willamette Valley, what? And But here we are, and I'll tell you what, this is just fantastic. That's pretty much the same uh, impression I had the first time I came here with my wife, and I was young then. It's uh, We're talking about 25 years ago. Uh, we came uh, here, I got an internship with a winery in the, in the valley. And when this uh, good friend of mine, uh, Véronique Drouin from Drouin Company in Beaune, where I'm from, uh, offered me to, uh, to spend a, a harvest season uh, working in their winery in Oregon, I was like, oh, wow, I'd love that. But <laughs> where is Oregon? Yeah. Uh, coming from France, it was kind of far. But then we discovered it and fell in love uh, right away with, with this area, the, 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 as I said, the landscape, but the people as well. It's, uh, it's yeah, really gorgeous. That's one thing we've noticed is the people here are so friendly and so nice. And we couldn't, couldn't have nicer people to, to be around. It's just been fantastic. So. Yep. So what makes the Willamette Valley so unique and such an optimal place to grow wine grapes and the type of wine here? Well, the, the Willamette Valley wines have uh, all the characteristics of the cool climate wines. Mm -hmm. um, the slow growing conditions and cool nights are great for retaining acidity, which is, um, from my point of view, the, the backbone, the, the balance and the longevity of great Pinot Noirs and Chardonnay. Um, that's true. Uh, that has been true for a uh, million um, thousand of years in in Burgundy, mm -hmm. and it, it's true here as well. So uh, it's a, it's a it's a precious uh, tool to have this cool climate to to create uh, wines with delicate aromas, uh, uh, beautiful forms of elegance, uh, and and the the entire Willamette Valley is is really uh, beautiful for that, and particularly here on uh, the Ribbon Ridge area where uh, I developed my, uh, my estate. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. As we've been exploring different wineries in the area this month, we discovered each little area has a little different name and AVA. Now, everyone calls it an AVA. Tell me what an AVA means. 
So AVA is uh, is for American viticultural area. So once uh, an area uh, where we uh, potentially can grow grapes is determined and, and designed, uh, there is a, a study that is made to see if it has a specificity that would make this wine different from uh, Grapes that growing uh, grown on this uh, land would make wines a lot different, distinctive from uh, from the, the the one that is uh, like few few hundred jars uh, uh, away. So uh, there are um, a larger uh, region that is called the Willamette Valley, which has been created by this kind of a, a Missoula flood uh, mm -hmm. a million years ago. That has been this huge flood that created the the, the Willamette Valley. Um, so it's a cool climate area with um, a nice exposure to to the south and to the west. That uh, is potentially good for for growing grapes. And the, these hills uh, that are within the the Willamette Valley. Uh, our potential great uh, exposure for, for grape vines. At the same time, uh, once uh, this has been determined, within the Willamette Valley, there are some, some of these uh, uh, regions that are actually um, very different from uh, one another uh, for geological uh, origins. And, and it's gonna, each of them is gonna make a different- Yeah, uh, flavor. Uh, ar ar yeah, architecture to the wine, yes, yeah. uh, definitely. And that's something I've learned from my trips to Italy and Spain is just, I mean, there's so many elements and characteristics that each wine inherits from the land at the exposure the sun the soil the moisture i mean it's it goes on and on and on the number the, the number of weeks the leaves are on the vines and how that affects the sweetness i mean it's it's a complete science and an art combined is what i find wine making to be right and i really like the fact that this uh, diversity of soil that we can mm -hmm. find in the willamette valley within a, a larger uh <coughs> larger Willamette Valley itself, the, each of these different uh, little hills have a specificity that we can really distinguish a little bit like we, we do in Burgundy, where I am from, to, uh, to really um, uh, expose the, the, the vines to, uh, to bring a different flavor to the, to the Pinot Noir. Yeah. Pinot Noir grape is a uh, grape very, very sensitive to all the factors it um, it can encounter. So uh, the soil is a, a particular one that is going to give a different uh, uh, approach to to each of the, the 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 wines that are made from these different type of soil. So yeah. when I discovered the the valley, uh, it was another element that I really liked, like being able to um, to create different wines within the same uh, variety, which is Pinot Noir but each of them having uh, a slight different profile. So how did you find this particular spot? I mean, how did you, f how did, coming from France, what was it about this spot in Oregon? In well, it takes several years, then it didn't happen right, uh, <laughs> right away. So we, we first came in 25 years ago and we, we created our own estate uh, that's about six years ago now. So okay. it took some time, but uh, talking to people and also farming for, for other, uh, wineries and vineyards. So I've been I've been farming in the valley for several years now, and I've been able to um, experiment uh, the, the 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 flavors, the type of wine I could make from this different uh, AVA. Right. And uh, pretty much from the beginning, I really loved the, uh, the 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 elegance and the structure of the wine that was made from the Ribbon Ridge, yeah. which is the area where where we are right yep. right, right now. And uh, I've been looking for um, a great uh, piece of land that I could purchase uh, to uh, to develop my own estate uh, well, on, the, on the Ribbon it. Ridge. Whether you did wine here or not, it's just absolutely beautiful. It, it is. So that was another element why we chose this uh, this piece of land. It was the exposure, the type of soil. So I love uh, clay mm -hmm. for 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 the for being the base of uh, of the wine growing um, area, but also because you know I'm f uh, from being from Burgundy is a type of soil that I've been uh, you know used to work with when since I was a kid yeah. um, and here I finding he finding it here for me it was a really a key element to develop and also um, the exposition here I, I found this piece of land that is uh, kind of in a bowl but that means uh, I can 
really have some blocks that are um, facing east, some facing west, some facing south. Yeah, all so different, different elements I could play with, definitely. It was a, a really interesting uh, part of it. And, and the beautiful view that yeah. you can have from here, it's, uh, it's yeah. really It was hard to get us to leave those Adirondack chairs that day because it was just fantastic. I mean, we could have stayed there forever. So I think that's part of the reason why we're back here again. So I got to mention th your lovely wife who we just met, Isabel, ironically. Of course, my wife's name is Isabel. And uh, very delightful lady. You're, you're both from France, right? Correct. And so, how did you how did you come from France? How did you how did you make that change? So we love to we love to travel from the to, to to start with, and then uh, like discovering Oregon um, just as, as an internship uh, 25 years ago, uh, it was uh, it was really mind blowing, and this this area was so um, so spectacular. So uh, that was uh, one thing we we had kind of a on the bucket list to, to maybe develop some 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 day a vineyard here. <laughs> uh, so we came back uh, permanently uh, working in America about uh, 20 years ago now, and uh, and started working in Washington State um, and working with different varieties. I really wanted to go back to uh, to the Willamette Valley and found a, a position to. Uh, to really uh, develop wines and uh, grow grapes in the valley, not mm. only for uh, one specific uh, vineyard, but for several. So it was uh, it was really an, a great, great opportunity for me to come back and uh, and experiment myself with uh, the different AV uh, like we talked about uh, exactly. in the valley. That was uh, that was about ten years ago now. Yeah. So tell me about growing up in France. I mean, you you you're both from France. You grew up there. Tell us, a, you know, how did you d get into the wine business? I mean. What was it like? What, were you, what, what was Bruno like as a kid? So Bruno were you making kid, wine and when you were like five with <coughs> your buddies? Or Bruno was, uh, was uh, growing in a family of uh, grape growers and winemakers. So my, my grand-grandfather started the estate in, in Burgundy. Okay. Uh, and uh, I remember myself tasting uh, fruit juice from the, from the, the press uh, uh -huh. with my grandfather when I was maybe four or wow. five. Wow, great memories. Uh, and, then, and then growing as a kid, uh, every afternoon, at the time we had afternoon free uh, or free to stay, you know, to do home homework. I was going in the vineyard actually <laughs> to have my father, and uh, and I, I at first I didn't really like that, but um, it, it grew on me, and uh, I just you know I I realized it was a it was a fantastic job to to create. Um, as we talked a little bit earlier, I mean we have a job where we're creating. Uh, uh, sensation to people. We're creating something that potentially will last, and uh, that is, on, in my mind, pretty beautiful. So it's very uh, beautiful. It's very exciting type of job. So realizing that um, I can, I could make a, a career out of that, and not necessarily in my own backyard, but pretty much anywhere in the world. Right. That's, no, it's interesting when I hear you talk. You know, comparing it to architecture, it is very similar. It's it's an art. It's a science. It's ingredients. It's all these little elements that come together to create a building or a house, and so it's 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 very very similar. And I, I've really learned that from all the different people I've been interviewing and all the different artists that make up you know our lives. But so you really are to me an artist. You got a canvas. Your canvas happens to be grapes and wine, and and you paint it and you create different creations every single time, right? Right. I think the big difference would be the material you're using. So a painter, you may have, you may have bad paint to start yeah, with and yeah, yeah. or bad, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, canvas or whatever, and that's not going to work really well. Uh, if he has all the good elements, uh, the nice picture to to copy or sure. whatever in front of him. Good ingredients. Uh, the good ingredients is to make, I mean, it's it's... If he has a little bit of talent, it's, it's hard to do <laughs> wrong, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So your passion and knowledge for wine grew as you earned your master's degree in enology. Is that how you say that? That's what. Yeah, that's what it is. Enology it's, in is viticulture. And we were trying to explain, we were having you explain what viticulture is. Yeah, uh, so viticulture is the, uh, the science of growing grapes. So vitis is the, uh, the, the Latin name for, uh, for vine. For vine, yep. Um, and um, Vitis vinifera is the one that actually uh, is the, uh, the family of, uh, of vines that are uh, producing grapes to make wine. Right. So uh, you earned your master's degree. So it, to me, it truly is a science. It's an art and a science, as I've been saying. So you got a degree from the University of de Bourgogne. 
The Bourgogne, oh, uh, it's the Burgundy. Bourgogne. Yeah, it's University of Burgundy. It's in Dijon, the, Dijon. The, the the capital of Burgundy. It's well known in the world for for the for the mustard, but actually, it's yeah. uh, <laughs> the origin is really the the wine. Uh, interestingly, we wanted to find some uh, some nice uh, relation with our uh, with our past, with our uh, tradition, and we named this uh, our estate uh, Domaine Divio. Divio being the the early name of the town of Dijon. Interesting. So that's where, that's where we're from. That's where we met. Um, that's and if you if you look a little bit at the different clones of Pinot Noir mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we can find mostly uh, in Burgundy and and here in Oregon now. Uh, they, they they originated from Dijon. They they, they call the Dijon clones. So, for us, uh, Divio had this kind of a meaning that was back to the uh, origins. Interesting. So you've mentioned obviously France and Washington, but you've worked you've worked in wineries and vineyards all over the world, haven't you? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, a little bit. Well, not every all over the world, but in uh, a lot of different places. Um, I think the most um, Exotic, would say, uh, was Tahiti, where I um, I developed the first ever uh, vineyard and and made the first wine, uh, commercial wine, Interesting. Um, successfully. After after three years of development, um, I found somebody to uh, to take over the uh, the project, and uh, before we moved to to uh, the U.S. But so uh, your notes said that that was in 1999. Mm -hmm. I was in Tahiti in 1999. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and when you say this, I'm kind of re recalling something of some vineyard or some story to that effect. Well, I'm just wondering if it was the same there, thing. That was the, uh, probably the same because there was no other. Yeah. Interesting. Um, there's still no other. <laughs> so we probably met each other, what, tw 20, 30 it's years ago? It's we don't possible. even realize it. <laughs> yeah, it's so possible. funny. So that's an incredible journey. I mean, coming from Dijon, France, and, and being here now in the Willamette Valley, I mean, that's quite a change. So how on earth did you end up here in this? Is it still somewhat unknown wine region? I mean, this area is still developing, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's not well as, as recognized as Napa or Sonoma. And it's kind of like what I compare Umbria to Tuscany. Mm -hmm. you know? It's still, I mean, it's, it's still pretty small if you look at the numbers in terms of uh, volume produced and the uh, size of the vineyards and such. And uh, and we kind of like it that way. It's more like uh, intimate, mm -hmm. uh, family-driven, uh, down-to-earth uh, country people. Uh, and that's that's I think that's make make it uh, that's a part of uh, making it very attractive also for. I mean, uh, like friendly uh, area. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, it's uh, now recognized all over the world as uh, one of the top producers of uh, of Ian Pinot Noir and yeah. Chardonnay. Um, so, I I think we probably recognize that from the get go 25 years ago, and um, I've been asked so many times like, why did you came here instead of staying in Burgundy right. and and and, and developing question. your vineyard in 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 your family vineyard. So, uh, as I always like to say, I mean, I could have been um, taking the train, jumping on the train in in Burgundy, and just being just another another uh, maker, uh, or uh, coming here and uh, laying down the tracks for for the the future trains to drive on. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's um, that's an exciting part of uh, being. Uh, we've always been kind of an explorers and uh, you know some somehow adventurer. I think <laughs> like, like Tahiti being an yeah, good example of that. But but here it's not. I mean it's not such a big adventure. It's just exciting to be able to play with all these amazing elements of uh, of cool climate, of, of difference of soils and uh, yeah. and potential for great great. Yeah, and I think what's kind of caught me by surprise is. I knew about the Pinot Noirs, and I knew this is the area for that. But the Chardonnays, I'm not a big Chardonnay fan, but it, we've enjoyed some really good Chardonnays since we've been here in the in the valley. It's been fabulous, and yours is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty proud of it. So, it's uh it's something I, I really like to make. Chardonnay yeah. is a is is a very it's very I mean it's made all over the world. So you know, pretty much every every region in the world is making Chardonnay, but what makes it distinctive in Burgundy and here is like the the the, the capacity of capturing this kind of a mineral elements, the uh, the uh, the marine ocean breeze that that you can get into this uh, this Chardonnay here. Yeah. So that's a that's a really way, uh, a really large, uh, very appealing um, element that uh, that I really like to to develop. Uh, 
uh, Chardonnay that has a real sense of place. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. I mean, <coughs> some of Chardonnays to me are too syrupy and too, you know, oaky, and I've just enjoyed the varieties that I've been exposed to here. And some of the bubbles that I've gotten here in, in the Willamette Valley have been pretty fantastic too. So I think for the same reason as uh, we growing great uh, Pinots and Chardonnay, the cool climate is a big part of, uh, mm. of being successful with making sparkling. So yeah, um, there's no reason that we we wouldn't be successful growing. Green grapes for sparkling. Well, when here. it's 117 in Phoenix, Arizona, sparkling sounds pretty good, it as opposed yeah. to a big, heavy. You know, I, I totally understand that Cabernet or something like that. So exactly. We've been we've been kind of stockpiling on those rose sparkling rosés and the sparkling uh, the little champagnes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys are a big foodie family. We love that you hold monthly and uh, monthly food and wine dinners. I understand, and obviously we're big foodies too. And I saw last month you did a summer sunset with Pinot and pizza. Now how great of a combination is that? And this month you did a Pinot and paella. Okay, so paella is a magic word for me. I'm a big paella maker, as everybody knows. Um, and so tell me about that a little bit. That's pretty exciting. Well, uh, the uh, the food, f I mean, the wines we're making are definitely food friendly. So uh, having a way to, uh, I mean, we're making, we, we're doing a, a job where we pretty much entertaining people. Yeah. So adding food to it, it's more entertainment. Uh, and when you find some dish that uh, kind of a everybody a consensus likes, it's good to uh, it's good to, to try to find a, a way to pair and and and, and enjoy. Um, having been uh, staying in house uh, with virus around for some time, people are so happy to be able to uh, to go out and uh, with uh, even with the restrictions of uh, of, of distancing and, yeah. and and mask and whatnot, uh, uh, being able to still uh, have some good entertainment, it's uh, it's really it's really really nice, really enjoyable. So uh, we've been uh, we've been yeah trying as much as we could to to create to recreate these kind of uh, events uh, with a uh, with you know safe in mind of course. Yeah, and I think what I. I think what attracted me to this this particular winery and what you've just said is it's about the experience. You know, I go to a lot of places and have a glass of wine, and it's a glass of wine, and maybe it's great wine or whatever. But when we came here, even though it was very quiet, I could sense the experience because we got the tour of the little area back here and the, the room that opens and dinner. And it was really easy to put myself and imagine myself having dinner in the vineyard. So you guys do some amazing Amazing events, from what I understand. Well, we've been we've been trying to. Uh, I mean, th it's all a question of uh, um, um, enjoy and uh, enjoyment. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we we you're, have in, you're enjoying it as much as your I as do your guests are. Right? Well, we do. Yeah, <laughs> um, we want to offer our 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 clients and club members in particular uh, something they might not necessarily find somewhere else. I mean, the wine is good, and I'm I'm really proud of the wines I'm pouring, uh, but sometimes it's, it's not enough. You want to you want to add a little spice to it that makes <laughs> it different from uh, from the other growers. Um, and and as we love food, I mean we we come from a, a place where food is uh, really a, a huge important part of the, of the, of life. So yeah. for us, it's important to share that. Yeah, that's fantastic. And then to top it off, uh, I understand that uh, your wife and you lead or you. Isabel, you lead private tours to how do you say that? Bo Bo Bayonne? Bone. It's uh, Bone, it's okay. called Bone. Yeah, that the uh, that the heart of uh, of Burgundy region, and um, it's uh, it's a place where we like to take our, um, some of our club members every mm -hmm. year and and have them discover our, our beautiful uh, our beautiful area, not just only the 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 um, uh, the the origin of the the Pinot Noir, but also uh, also the food, which is a big part of it. And there is history. We're visiting museums and uh, yeah. and cooperage uh, vineyard uh, and um, oak oak barrels cooperage and, uh, and a lot of good things that makes uh, make the part of the the journey. So how really often do you do a tour? Do you do it once a year? Or we do. Yeah, we we uh, we we started uh, with uh, once a year, but now we we we're thinking of uh, Isabel's going to start doing that, that uh, more of a. Uh, more of a regular uh, offer of different different time of the year. Yeah, what what time of year do you usually do it? 
We usually do in June, yeah. um, and then we are want to add some in uh, in November potentially, yeah. and and uh, we we are in. We wanted to start that uh, last year, but then with this kind of a situation, yeah, we, 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 had to, we have year. to hold it, and now we're putting uh, this back together now yeah, and starting good. to think about some other some other times yeah. we can do that. Well, we'd like to maybe dovetail with the two of you, because that could be a lot of fun. And, and you told me you, you take about 12 people, too, just because of the size and some of the sellers and some of the venues you visit. You want to keep it small. You want to keep it intimate. So everyone really has a really wonderful experience. Uh, exactly that. Uh, that the point. Um, but also we're so far we're taking our club members. So yeah. it may, makes sense. It's a, another uh, uh, interesting way of uh, being being a club member, having access to it. And, uh, and so tell me about your club membership a little bit, because I know I know a lot of the wineries. In fact, I think almost every of them, all of them, have some type of club membership. And I belong to a couple. I know we belong to Duck Pond, which is in Newburgh, and we stumbled on that about three, four years ago. And it's fun because, you know, what they do, what I've told them to do is they'll they'll call me on the phone as we got a new shipment or we got a new, I don't know what you call it. Yeah, shipment, yeah. Shipment coming. And or release, a release, release. yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. We have a new release coming, and, and when, would you like this? I said, tell me, just send me your three favorites or your six favorites or your 12 favorites. Right. And it's fantastic because I would have never picked those. And I just love getting my box of wine, and it's like, oh, my gosh, this one is so good. And so I, I've enjoyed being a part of these, these wine clubs, and I'm obviously going to join yours because I want to do pizza and pie and wine in your vineyard someday. Um, but in terms of your members, are what I'm curious about is, are they local? Are they from all over the country? Is it a mixture? Well, how does that mixture work out in your mind? We opened our uh, business uh, to the public about five years ago now. Um, so uh, originally it was only locals, but now we have pretty much uh, club members on almost every state. Nice. Uh, even though, I mean, more than two-thirds, I, I guess, are uh, from from Oregon? Area. Yes, yeah. yeah. Maybe a maybe a bit over, uh, maybe a bit less than, than two thirds, but uh, at least half of our club members are from uh, from the area yeah. here. Is it a lot mostly Portland? It's uh, no, it's uh, it's all over the all over the state. Yeah, all over the state. Interesting. Yeah, and some Washington as well. I mean, you have a lot of people from Washington State as well. I mean, the 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 large the large groups are, I would say, Texas, uh, yeah. Washington. California, actually, yeah, California, uh, that's that's interesting that a lot of <laughs> Californians love our Pinot, which is great. Yeah, um, well, I've become a big Pinot fan over the last thirty days, so <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. So, how often do you do the the cooking events? I know this year, let's just forget this year because right. this year is, you know, totally different. But in the past, how well how we often used do you do to have events. Uh, I mean, events for clubs and and in general events like almost once a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and how big of a venue do you have? How many people do you have at those? Well, we. I mean, it's it it's packed. <laughs> it? Oh, wow, wow. It, it, it packs, it's packed, but uh, probably more in the summer than we have in the winter. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So what's it like here in the winter time? Because I've I've been I visited my daughter when she was in school in November and stuff like that. But I'm just curious in this area, like in December, January, is it? It, it doesn't snow, right? It does. It does. Once yeah, yeah, it, it does. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not like heavy, but yeah. but we we may have some snow on the ground, and uh, so it's it's it, it well, it's a cool climate that can be. I mean, Oregon is known to be to be wet, so yeah. it could be pretty rainy uh, for pretty Long good number of months. <laughs> um, but then here we so that's why you know I decided to create this um, fireplace here. So uh -huh. in the winter, it's really really comfy. Uh, staying here and um, in a fireplace, and we're putting some couch, and nice. so we can sit here with a glass of wine and uh, spend a good. Uh, I like the way you roll, the Bruno. You're my kind of guy. I tell you what. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> paella, pizza, fires. I mean, this is. I know what you like him, Isabel. <laughs> She's over here smiling. She's got a big grin on her face. So what's what's next for for you guys? What are some of the things you're thinking of or dreaming about in the future? Well, right now we're really happy to develop this um, this business here. Um, and uh, and and creating uh, maybe developing a bit more this this tour um, mm -hmm. business, uh, business uh, in France and maybe to some other uh, maybe Italy or some other place we don't know yet but uh, that would be another one uh, of them but I like to take things like one at a time so mm -hmm. right now I mean we're just starting to be 
to be um uh i would say that we are the new kid on the block in terms of uh, producers here but at the same time very we we we're, we're pretty successful so uh we want to keep it that way and yeah. uh and make sure uh, everything's rolling smoothly and and keep making the some of the best wine in the world is uh is really my goal here Excellent. and and awesome. making sure I'm, i stay behind my wines and i'm proud of every bowl i'm pouring so that's, yeah, that's i think that's so most important another thing i'm always curious about with the wine industry i mean do you like do you sell to distributors that then sell to bevmo or i mean or is your wine just very private and you only sell to the people who who order your wine through your club yeah so far yeah we i mean and i and i don't want to be uh to be uh showing my wines on on shelves in uh, some some yeah exactly that's not the point uh yeah. we want to stay small yeah um so right now we are almost 3000 cases but uh we're selling everything here at the tasting room we have few restaurants that was my next question uh, so around do you go to directly to some restaurants we we have a little bit. I yeah. mean, really, not not much at all, yeah. uh, and that's all. That's all. That's about it. So that's also why uh, our clients, our club members, are really um, happy about that because they they, they can find one unique. that they, yeah that they're pretty unique. Yes, yeah. um, and um, and yeah, you yeah you need to you can order online though. Uh, we can ship okay. any anywhere in the US. Know. That's Anywhere in the US, it can be shipped. And uh, for our best club members, we have three tiers, but the highest tier. Which is called Ambassador. Uh, we ship for free uh, to our club members anywhere in the U.S. Nice. I mean, what I'd like to do, I'm, I'm brainstorming here as we as we talk, and I've I've got some great chefs back in Phoenix, and we put a full kitchen in our office. And so, what I'd love to do is get one of my great chefs from Phoenix, get your wine shipped in for the evening. Have you come to Phoenix? Talk about your wine. We just had a group from our Italy tour come to our house in February, just before the whole COVID thing happened. They flew in. They, they flew in the food. We they cooked it, and we had guests from prior Italy trips that evening at our house. They sold twenty five thousand dollars worth of wine at our house that night. That's cool. So yeah. we can put we can put some we can put some fun things together. Yeah, it would be that would be fun It'd actually. Be fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and I I could I could ver I can guarantee you you will walk away with some great club members that evening. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. We'll have to do some stuff like that. So another thing I understand is that one of your two sons is studying viticulture at at Oregon State University? Yes, uh, older son um, is in second year of Oregon State University doing uh, viticulture, which yeah. is, so you have the choice in between here, in, I mean, in in this program, you have the choice to be, to start with winemaking or to start with growing grapes. Interesting. Uh, so I convinced him that he needs to start from the start, so yeah. which from is... From the beginning of the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> so growing grapes is the first step. Yeah. And then making wine... Then you understand. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, being the second. So, he's a, so that's what he's going to do, like about, about two years in, in growing grapes and then two years in making wine. That's fantastic. So, uh, you, so you're, kind of, you're kind of working up a way to keep this legacy going. Well, that's a plan. I don't know if, I mean, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, but control. at least I, I, yeah, yeah, I think. Planted I the seed. Exactly. <laughs> I planted the seed. So what's next for Bruno and Isabel? What other things are you guys thinking about? Well, more tours. Well, we like to travel, so we're going to probably do uh, a little bit more travels. But, um, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we're we thinking of creating um, a place, uh, developing a place where some of our club members could stay as well. Oh, in, that'd be in fantastic. So we're trying to find an Airbnb we can... I know a good architect if you never need to, to build something, you know, on this beautiful property. Exactly. Though well, that would be a good um, relationship here, <laughs> like, yeah. Definitely, yeah. We are, we're thinking about that, about that developing maybe uh, an Airbnb and maybe an, maybe one here, so we can we can exchange. So um, uh, I created this um, estate with a with a partner, a longtime friend, a French as well, that uh, with the company purchased also a vineyard, um, two vineyards actually in, mm. in Burgundy, mm -hmm. uh, one being in Chablis. You may have heard about yep. Chablis as being uh, one of uh, amazing source of great uh, Chardonnays. And uh, we're thinking of develop developing also the, the brand and bringing some, some of the Chablis oh, here great. under the Domaine Divio label. 
That'd be fantastic. Yeah, the little, we've been looking for a venue where there might be some cottages on the property and we could have cooking class, wine, you know, wine class, wine making. I don't know. I mean, who knows? My clients love everything. That's, uh, that's something we have, uh, we have on our list. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, fantastic. So we've got some great photos we've taken of your place. And uh, tell us about your website and your, and do you have a podcast page? No. On our podcast page. Okay. I was like, wow, they have a podcast too. Um, so tell us about uh, where can we find you? Where can we get in touch? So if you, uh, if you type domendivio.com, you will uh, we'll find our web page and you'll see beautiful p pictures that my wife is taking. She's the, she's a master of the image behind the, be behind the company. She's, she's really good at, uh, uh, you know, capturing these, uh, sure. these beautiful uh, scenery we can find in Oregon. And um, so you'll, uh, you'll find all of our wines mm -hmm. um, and, and, some are available if you're club members, then they're not necessarily on the website. Uh, yeah. But uh, you'll find also uh, information about all the events we have here at the tasting room and, uh, and, and the futures and, um, and a little bit of the story of because we, we're not only trying to, to really focus on making the best Pinot Noirs on Chardonnay that you can find, but being sustainable as well, being respectful on the, on the, the environment. So uh, you'll find some information about us being uh, organic and even uh, following up the biodynamic farming. Uh, That's another uh, farming. important part. That's a part that my wife's very, very interested in. Is all, she, she was a member of Dry Wines, mm -hmm. and then she gets organic wines. And so I, when we heard that about you, that was just another plus on your on your scorecard for us yeah we are also part of the slow uh, slow food program and slow wine program it's which is which is not not hurrying things making things i mean smooth enough so you can really enjoy it and yeah. and not pushing the the vines to produce more but 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 helping them to produce better right uh which is i think a, a, a big um a big part of uh, of of what um, our philosophy. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. One other quick question: that you can keep thinking of new stu things here. Uh, in the time that you've been here, have you noticed the climate change? I mean, you've had you have you had to adapt your winemaking to what you perceive as a change in climate. Or is it just different seasons and it comes and goes? Well, yes and no. Actually, yes, we we, we know, yeah, definitely like everybody else noticed some some um, some uh, differences uh, from year to year and increased um, temperatures. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have to adjust our uh, farming to that, uh, but more on the. Uh, on the day to day and not necessarily on the long term because I mean, I don't know if ten years from now right. I'm not I'm a hundred percent sure. Yep. Uh and, and we, we're growing grapes that's gonna be probably uh still here, hopefully still here like eighty years from now. So when you take a decision on planting uh, that yeah you, you, you take the challenge and then that that's it. But yeah. then you um you coming from Burgundy, where pretty much every vintage is different, which is not necessarily the case on the on the West Coast, even more here in Oregon mm -hmm. than it is in 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 California. But you have to adapt your uh, farming practices every year, depending on the on the vintage, what right. we call the vintage, right. which is the uh, the 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 precipitations or temperatures or. Um, How much wine do you store or keep? From different different vintages, different years. For our uh, winery, um, not much. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get, you just get a little bit, just a little bit to have something to to taste uh, twenty <laughs> years from now. Uh, we we're keeping about twenty five cases of gotcha. each wine we're making. Um, but we're very successful, as I said. So uh, a lot of our club members who have access to library wines are. Or making a big dent into it. <laughs> that's fantastic! Well, that's you, you got you got some you got some new happy members joining here today. So um, we're going to put plenty of photos on our web page. We're going to have um, places where you can get more information on our story notes and the, the podcast. will have uh, on the website. We'll have all of our information. So definitely check it out. These two are absolutely fantastic people. You're so gracious, and I appreciate you making the time to do this. We can't wait to drink some wine tonight. So. Thank you so much. It's Thank very, very nice to meet both of you. Thank you, Mark and Tiffany and Isabel, to be uh, here tonight. And uh, and I said that you can you can um, look at our uh, profile on uh, our website and uh, and if you have a. Uh, 
the opportunity to to uh, to uh, order some wine. Just uh, just do and and uh, you'll see by yourself and taste oh by yeah. yourself. Yeah, and we've, uh, we've been enjoying it the, the couple of weeks we've been here, so <laughs> it's been fantastic. And I just get the feeling we're going to be doing some cla collaborations here in the future that are going to be beneficial to not only the two of the four of us or the five of us, but all of our clients and customers. So thank you again. Possibly. Thank you, Mark. I want to say a big thank you to my good friends at Stockett Tile and Granite Company, where your project is our priority. I want to thank the Stockett team along with so many others who contributed to the success of our fabulous demonstration kitchen in our new Candelaria Design office expansion. You will have to check out our online video cooking classes and our kitchen is amazing. I've had the pleasure of working with the Stockett team for nearly 40 years on many spectacular projects and trust me, they are the epitome of excellence when it comes to tile, marble, and granite work, bar none. Their skill and customer service is impeccable, and the bottom line is they are just good people. I have traveled with, dined with, and just had good times, both personally and professionally, with Dave Stockett and his lovely wife, Becky, and they are the best. When it comes to your next tile and stone project, make sure Stockett Tile and Granite is a part of your team. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. We encourage you to write a review, screenshot it, and share it with your friends. Please instant message it to me and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We thank you for listening, and we look forward to sharing more insights to Inspiring Living next week.